one for you guys. Okay. Four, three, two, and one. Hello, Nashies. I know so much unfamiliar territory happening. I mean, really with the show. Um, and then also, too, for our set tonight, um, we're actually coming to you from L.A. Um, we're going to have a special little uh, Nash chat, sit down with the executive producer, because we know there's just so much going on, so many questions, so many feelings, so many emotions. I mean, hello, we've just dealt with the loss of, of Raina James, and tonight's episode gave me all the feels, um, so much emotion, so much character building, so much hope. Um, really, that's what I gathered from it. It's like, okay, we're, we're mourning the loss of Raina. Um, we're sort of still in shock. It's like disbelief. Is this real? Did this really happen? But then also through the, the character building, I think, in this episode, there's hope that, yes, the show can go on. So hopefully we can answer some of those questions for you tonight since we do have a special uh, guest joining us. So with that said, let's go ahead and just get this thing started. Nash Chat. It's starting right now. So, normally we've got a musical guest with guitar, and we've got a couch with Nashy sitting on the couch, but not tonight. Tonight we have executive producer of Nashville, Marshall Herskovitz. Thank you so much for being here. Hey there. Thank you for having me. I mean, I'm excited to kind of go through what we've been calling the three D's around here because we're going to, Marshall's kind of chuckling because, I mean, it's kind of serious. We want to like w share with me what we're going to do. We're going to yeah. dissect, we're going to discuss, and we're going to debrief. Debrief. So you guys, dissect, discuss, discuss, and debrief, you know, everything that you've been wanting to know, hopefully um, we cover. And Marshall's got a lot of cred in the industry. I mean, if you're familiar with 30-something or my so-called life once and again, and now Nashville, I mean, a slew of other things for sure, but um, you kind of have a whole coming-of-age theme throughout your projects that you've been involved in, and I feel like tonight we saw some of that um, with Maddie yeah, and for Daphne sure. for sure, like the yeah. coming of age of that and yes. what you were able to to do with their characters and kind of share with me, and this was kind of off camera, we were back in the makeup room, yeah. but um, you said some of the stuff with Maddie just happened so organically. Yeah, I mean, first of all, both of these girls are such amazing actresses. They're just, and this year, they've blossomed in this way. And to watch them, like in last week's episode, mm -hmm. when Raina died, uh, to see how yeah. they rose to that and the, the level of emotion that they sustained. You know, it's one thing to cry. It's another thing to cry take after take in the same way. Oh, for sure. It took such amazing skill and talent. And so then, coming into this episode, both the girls, um, you saw them sort of rise to the occasion, especially Maddie. It's as if she grew up in one minute. It's as if, you know, it, you know it's as if the child becomes parent to the parent in mm -hmm. that moment, you know, like when she puts her puts Deacon to bed, that sort of thing. There's a level of generosity of spirit that she showed in this that it, it wasn't that it wasn't in the script, but but Lennon kind of brought it to life in a way that I think surprised all of us. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's neat to have this kind of insight. We don't always have someone that's behind the <laughs> scenes and knows exactly what's going on. We've had a lot of people from the show on, but this yeah. is the guy like making <laughs> it happen. Um, and so you brought up the scene of, of Maddie, um, well, on stage. I don't know if we discussed this before we got here, but I kind of want to revisit the clip of when they're at the CMT Awards yeah. and they are doing the Reina tribute. Sure. And then Juliet calls Maddie out. And then the whole family joins in for Sanctuary. So let's check that clip out. I will share the way you can. Sanctuary. I will share.
there, there was probably some tears shed at home. I know for me personally, yes, goosebumps. Like that scene was just so emotional. It reminded me of the hospital scene when they were singing to Rena at her bedside. I mean, I have goosebumps even saying that right now, legit. And I didn't know for sure. I was like, wait, am I experiencing this? Because I've experienced a loss like that. But I know so many, I mean, everybody's kind of lost someone that they're close to. But how y'all were able to make it seem so real i mean that's like hats off to you guys for Thank sure you. like that Thank that you. tribute on stage just talk us through how all of that played out because it was legit real you know what was funny is one of the earliest ideas we had in other words once we decided that Raina was going to die, and we can talk about how that came about. And, and might we're be definitely good just a little teaser for later on. We yeah. are going to address that because there is yeah. a story behind that, yeah. and I know there's so many questions. But let's cover but, this. But once we knew Raina was going to die, somehow this notion that she was supposed to have been singing at the award show, and um, and you know Juliet is going to do it, and at the last minute Juliet says to Maddie, "You should do it," and yeah. Maddie goes out there, and the idea that she goes out. And she's doing great, and then she just can't sustain yeah. it because she's too emotional. Yeah, it's and smart. then the whole family comes up on stage. That was what it was. It came to us like in a flash. I mean, we didn't even know which episode it would be in, by the way. Oh, okay. In other words, we didn't know if it would be in this episode or in the one where she died or in the one coming next week. We just knew we were going to do it because we knew it was, it, we, there was something so profound about that moment of someone walking out on stage and and opening up her heart and just being overcome by emotion and having the family be there for her mm -hmm. it was it was it was so at the heart of what the show is yeah i was picturing it too like from being in the crowd at the cmt award i mean everything about it again was painted so real like i was thinking of the crowd I see at the CMT or just being in Nashville and in, in the industry, like I've gone and I'm like, there is no way there is a dry eye in the house. Yeah. Like I'm picturing every, yeah. every person there um, just mourning the loss of Raina. And since we touched on that going into the clip, I think it's only appropriate mm. that we now, let's just get to the elephant sure. in the room. Let's do it. Um, yeah. There's mixed emotions. I mean, yeah. some people are- For all of us, are, by the yeah. way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like, okay, well now that raina has gone, well now what? But let's address with, let's address kind of why raina has gone. Yes, okay. So, well, we can do that. Yes. We're curious. It's, you know, what happened was when CMT took over the show, Connie came to us and said, uh, with a great deal of difficulty, by the way, it was not an easy decision for her, but she came to us and said that she really felt creatively that it was time for her to move on. Right. And I understood that, you know, when we did 30 something, we did that for four years and we then asked the network to cancel the show because we felt we were done, you know? Right. So I got it, I understood. She was still under contract to Lionsgate, the production company. So it was not a simple thing. She couldn't just leave the show. So we said, look, you know, if you don't, want to be here if you want to do something else for creative reasons because it wasn't about the show she loved the people on the show she just felt for her as an time. artist it was time to move on we said we'll write you out we'll figure it out then of course you know it's like how do you write somebody out of the show like Raina you know and we spent about a week trying to think of scenarios yeah, where she could like? still be alive. Are there any scenarios you could share with us that got no, like... No, because they were all stupid. Oh. You know, it's like... <laughs> well, we're okay with that. She, she's taken hostage by the Taliban. I mean, nothing... There was nothing believable. Well, that would be really extreme. It would be horrible. But, yeah. but here's the point. The way this character is understood by everybody, she loves her daughter so much. She loves her husband so much. There's no circumstance that you can imagine where she wouldn't be in constant contact with them. So she goes on tour. So she, so she goes to an ashram somewhere. She would still be in contact with her family, you know? Right. So if she's going to be gone, we very reluctantly... You needed, like, to rip the Band-Aid off We and just, just make had, it. had to do it. And by the way, we did that with Connie. She agreed reluctantly that that was the only way to do it. So how involved was Connie in the creative process of what was happening with Raina? Well, what I would say is the way we always work is um, is we come up with the stories and then we we work with the actors and um, and we take 
into consideration their concerns, their feelings, their desires, that sort of mm-hmm. thing. But, you know, I came up with this scenario and uh, told it to Connie, and she just, you know, thought it was the best possible way to go. Now, there's another piece of this that I think is important. I know people were very, very upset last week. We really understand that. So were we. I mean, it, it's a huge loss. The thing we wanted to make sure was that, you know, this season we have is broken into two pieces, as most people know. We have 11 episodes, and then there's going to be a hiatus, and then there are 11 more episodes, okay? So we didn't want to have Raina die at the end of the 11th episode and just say, bye-bye, folks, we'll see you in three months. You know what I mean? Right, we yeah. needed time for the characters on the show and for the viewers to process the fact that this titanic event had taken place. So we kind of worked backwards from that. And okay. we said, okay, we came up with a structure where, you know, in number eight, she has the accident. In number nine, she dies. In number 10, what you just saw, which is this, this what, what to me is the best episode we've done. It's just this lyrical tribute to her of, you know, everybody sort of in their, not just their grief, but the communality of it, the family, the sense of togetherness that people have. And then finally, episode 11, which is just a little bit of a glimpse of life after Raina. Do you know what I mean? People still utterly and completely devastated, but that sense that life has to move on because ineluctably it does. Okay. Well, speaking of, um, you know, the future episodes and life after Raina, she definitely was kind of the glue that held everybody together so it seemed yep. and she kind of unite like all these different people it was like Raina was the common yep. denominator yep. and like where's everybody going to go from there and I think a common concern is like oh my gosh what's going to happen to Deacon because <laughs> yeah. we just I mean with his history and his past like you're just like oh I hope he keeps it together but I thought um, one of the uh, the opening <laughs> scene with Deacon yeah. um, reading yeah. at the funeral um, yeah. I think that's a clip worth revisiting right now so let's do that sure She was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week and Sunday rest, a noon, a midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. That was wrong. Okay, wow. That's definitely heartbreaking to watch. And I'm sure for you guys having to kind of tape that and do it over and over, I mean, we've been walking through the emotions of the different scenes. Like, talk us through that, that particular scene. And also just to kind of lighten it up a little bit, I need to know if the rain is real. The rain. <laughs> Did y'all pick a rainy day? No. Or was it? No, it wasn't real. what was the intention behind it being? Was, is there there's some a, sort there, of symbolism there? The, the, there's a term in literature called the pathetic fallacy, which okay. is that somehow nature corresponds to our feelings. Mm. And, you know, it just seemed fitting. Um, actually, it originally, it was supposed to be a snowstorm, but for various technical reasons, we made it a rainstorm okay. instead. Um, the more you know. But, you know, it, it, it was, look, these two episodes were so incredibly emotional for the actors. And oh, by yeah. the way, for the entire crew. I mean, um, in the hospital, in, 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 the, in the one last week, everybody was crying the whole week. The crew, too. Just, you know, it was just, um, you know, just so deeply felt what was happening and the same in this and i gotta say chip Eston is the most remarkable oh actor. yeah he's i mean great. you you look at that and you go i i can't even call that acting that's something beyond acting you know that's it's so experienced it's so deeply um felt and and there's nothing held back do you know what i mean and yet it's you know there's not there's no artifice in it do you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. just a shattered man, you right. know, 
Well, you say a shattered man. That's what worries me about Deacon because uh-huh. – where do we see Deacon going from here? I know we can't give away too much, but I mean, how was it writing things or looking to the future with of Deacon without Reina? Like, yeah. What? Well, this is the challenge. I mean, look, as a dramatist, you look at the things that happen in life, and they are they are the fuel for what you do. Do you know what I mean? So a death in a family like this, you know spins off so many stories. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. And one of them is, how is this man going to go on? And by the way, tune in next week, because a oh. lot of that okay. is about how this man is coping with this and, okay. and what he's experiencing. Um, you know, but I think you're going to see that Nashville as a, as a world um, has a life and, and, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a vitality, um, even though Raina's gone. I mean, there's so many stories about the fact that she's gone. You know, look at these daughters. Look at, I mean, this, you know, the, the story tonight about who's going to be their guardian, which is sort of almost out of Dickens in some way. Oh, yeah. You know, and it was so heart-wrenching to see these, this, this, this especially Maisie, who plays Daphne. You know, yes. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like feeling torn between these two men, and they're both going to hate her, and it's such a profound experience for these girls. And yes, we try to make it as real as possible, which is just, you know, makes it even harder to bear. Um, well, some of the Nashies want to know, kind of, what are, what are your hopes and dreams for Deacon? <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. We, we don't think in terms of hopes and dreams. We think in terms of dramatic opportunities. In other words, what are the stories we can tell about a person in a situation like that? We, you know, I can't give anything away. Uh, on the other hand, I, I want to say that I believe that we've watched Deacon on this series grow mm-hmm. in a remarkable way. You know, from a man who was, you know, in the past in the grips of a terrible alcoholism to, you know, and to illness and cancer. And, you know, we've seen him grow into himself. Yeah. And now he's going to be tested in a way He's never been tested before. And great drama comes from that. I can't mm-hmm. give away what happens. Okay. But, you know, I I'm think crossing it's our fingers. Be a good I'm story. like, please, Deacon, don't <laughs> drink. Don't drink. Um, I mean, and Nashi's too, you can share with us um, what your hopes and dreams for Deacon are. And then maybe whatever you share with us, Marshall will take into consideration. <laughs> Or is that too late? Well, you know, <laughs> we if, can always make changes. <laughs> hey, you guys could contribute to Deacon's future. You can, um, yes. So yeah. let's move on yes. to Scarlett. Yes. And I think this episode, we saw her take on sort of a, a motherly role. Yeah. Um, especially with the girls, like, stepping in and kind of taking care of things and um, being... Uh, Comfort, being there, yeah. being uh, really comforting. So I think that that is another clip also worth revisiting. So let's play that real quick. Good. Take it. I just came to see how you were doing. If I could bring you anything at all. Is it still raining? I don't know. You, uh, you want to come out for a minute? You can be like this. You can be any way you need to be. Your family. Uh, Zach gave me this for you. This of you, Raina, and the girls. You, you don't have to look at it now. So yet another scene of someone coming into their their role, coming of age sort of thing. And I don't know, just talk to us about where you see Scarlett going with this whole mom figure situation. Her maternal instincts seem to be kicking in. Well, I think, first of all, 
we're always interested in the idea of change, not for its own sake, but the way in which people always change, they grow. And I think we've seen Scarlett this year, again, in some way come into her own. Yeah. Uh, by the way, not easily. It's been a bumpy road for her. For sure. But, you know, she's finding her strength, and I think we're going to see more of that. I think, you know, this is someone who, you know, at one point was hiding under a something on the stage and having a nervous breakdown. I mean, this is somebody who in many ways was very frail as a, as a, as a character, and we're seeing her grow, you know. And so um, it's, it's, for me, a pleasure because Claire is such a pleasure to work with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this was so natural for her. I mean, it was like, it's not like she had to be directed. She knew exactly what to do, you know, and it was, it was quite, it's one of the most beautiful pieces of the episode for me, the way in which in some ways she's the anchor, going from one yes. person to the next, taking yes. care of everyone. And I have to say, the moment where she breaks down, mm-hmm. which is this long shot where you're first seeing her talking to Tandy, and she's doing this, she's doing that, and then she walks into the hall, and then she breaks down. It's an astonishing piece of work. Right. Because it's not like she could just prepare and then just go and break down. She had to do the other stuff. Mm-hmm. And the camera's following her, and then she breaks down, and it's just, again, I just lose it every time I see her do that. Yeah. So. And so, like, when you say lose it, I mean, genuinely, as someone, I mean, executive producer, obviously, you're watching this over and over, but you still feel all of, I mean, you feel it all, and you lose, I mean. I have to tell you, I'm sitting there in the editing room, literally tears streaming down my cheeks going, all right, cut five frames from that, and move that shot to there, and I'm just like completely crying. I mean, so people yeah. that he is the reason behind the magic of it becoming so real. And I feel like that's your, your, the authenticity that comes through because I think I was even telling you before we, we came on, like in the back room, like everything just seems so real. <laughs> like well, some shows can um, go through these certain scenarios and it yeah. maybe seems like just kind of disconnected and cheesy, like, ah, uh, but they're, there really is something about this season that has just so much authenticity. Well, and le- you know, I, I really appreciate that. It's not me; it's me well, and I think the it's writers. Well, it's a testament to you and your team and the, the, and the actors. The, and you know, we the writers on this show, including Callie Curry, who's been there from the beginning. Mm-hmm. But the writers that we brought in uh, are people we've worked with in the past, and that idea of authenticity has been at the center of everything we do. I mean, Mm -hmm. you mentioned 30-something. You mentioned my so-called life. My so-called life is a good example because, you know, in those days back in the 90s, there had been shows about teenagers, but they were all exploitative in some way. It was all about the sexiness of teenagers and and the the lurid aspects of it. And we said, no, why can't you tell a story from the inside of a teenager's experience? Right. And we bring that to this show also. Authenticity is the main thing we look for, Mm -hmm. and it happens in how we design the stories, how we do the dialogue, how we direct. And the actors by now have internalized this and they 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 bring it to the set themselves. Yeah. Well so to kind of wrap up this little session about Scarlet, where do we see her going from here? <laughs> Oh, wait till next week. Oh, it's that Marshall. Wait till next it's, week. Marshall's though. just trying to get you guys no, to tune in next you week. You will learn something next week. Oh, I'm really? It's so legit about Scarlett? Will, yeah. And apparently about Deacon. Yes. And where he's going to go from here. Yeah, but Deacon is more... Deacon, you're going to watch Deacon process, okay? But you're going to learn something next week. I won't say anymore. But okay. tune in. So obviously a little teaser there. Tune in. Um, okay, so let's get into what's to come. In the famous words of Rain, Raina James, yes. the song might be over, but the story is not. <laughs> and, you know, after watching um, the final moments of tonight's episode, um, we're definitely hopeful that the story is going to go on without her. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe that it will. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, we go into the whole, at the end, the Teddy and Deacon moment, yeah. which I was sort of shocked by. Because they kind of had the moment before the CMT award started where you're like, okay, like Deacon's like, you know, hey, you can have, well, you just take custody, I'm going to step back. And then at the end, yeah. Teddy's like, hey, you know what? Like, it's kind of like they had this whole moment. So that, that those clips, that moment, the Teddy Deacon stuff, definitely worth, worth revisiting. So well, let's play those clips. <laughs> You're a good father. Look, uh, 
I appreciate what you said earlier, but the truth is I'm going to be gone for a while. And uh, I'd be obliged if you watched over them. Be their guardian for now. And uh, maybe when I, when I get back, we can work something out together. Hey, they want you back out there again. about that clip high five <laughs> you did a good job there because well i mean i just feel like that was a good way we needed that i think we needed that okay they're gonna come together they're gonna work together to make this right for the girls i mean because really like maddie and daphne i mean they're reina's legacy i mean they're yeah. she's yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah. they're yeah. the ones that are kind of kind of come up and be their mom like they're, yeah. it's their I mean, mom i mean the thing is that moment when Deacon overhears Daphne saying that mm -hmm. either way she loses, and she's afraid that each man is going to hate her, which is Ugh. such a kid thing. Golly, Do you know what I mean? That's so painful to even think about. And it makes me love Deacon so much that he looks at that and he goes, I just can't bear to bring any more pain into this child's life. Right. So I'll just step back. And, of course, that's the thing. That, that unselfishness that he shows at that moment is the thing – that actually changes Teddy's mind, you know, mm -hmm. because, and, and it's something I deeply believe in life, that, that, you know, that in the end, putting yourself out there in that way, having a generosity of spirit is what changes the world. And, yeah. and you know, people being defensive and, 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 and being argumentative and rarely gets you yeah. anywhere. No. So. And selfish. I mean, it's very selfless. Selfless. Yes. yes. Yeah. Very selfless um, yeah. act. So is there going to be more of a storyline between, you know, Teddy and, and Daphne now that he's back in the picture, I assume? Because he says he's going to Well, he's back like, in prison. He well, was but, only there for three days. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 But then three months he's going to be back? Yeah. Or like, what's the deal? Is it like three months or yeah. is it? Well, yeah. we're working that out. I can't really answer that question. Marshall, what in the world do we have you here for? You're not giving away. us anything. Um, we invite you here. We not, give you water. Not to make light of things. We but, tried to give you wine. Yeah. He well, won't tell me anything, people. But sorry, I mean, all sorry. he says is. Oh, I've been next tortured, week. and I wouldn't. I don't. I don't uh, divulge. Okay. Well, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, but obviously, without yeah. giving away too much, like. Yeah. You feel the hope. I mean, I feel it as a, as a big fan of the show, and I'm sure that you feel it, and y'all have worked tirelessly to make sure that the show this is will I, go on. I got to tell you, this is such an amazing cast, and it's such an amazing world. It will definitely go on. In other yeah. words, and by the way, a lot of the story is about the loss of Raina. It's not like they forget about her, for mm -hmm. heaven's sake. It's, it, you know, it's the processing of that, but... This, you know, we use this. We use a phrase. We call it critical mass. And what it okay. means is that when you have a character that is big enough and and deep enough that you can create stories about that person, we call that critical mass. And we've got, you know, Maddie, Daphne, Deacon, Scarlet, Gunner. There's so many stories to tell, you know. And and we're excited about what the future of the show is going to be. I mean, you know, look, we all feel this loss, but we wouldn't have done this if we didn't feel there was a great show that is going to continue. And and as I say, it's, it, you know, that hole that Raina leaves is a part of the show, just like it would be in life. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you, you deal with, you continue to deal with the loss of someone like that for a very long time. Well, so since you've indicated that there's hope for the future and clearly the show is going to go on, like... I mean, I know a lot of the Nashies out there. We're hearing from you. We're listening. I'm right there with you guys. We just want to know, like, yeah. ugh, I know you can't give too much away, but is there yeah. any sort of little sneak peek into the future, the second half of this season? Anything? <laughs> well, Where, right, let me see what I can talk What can about. I do? Let me Are you see. tickled with somewhere? <laughs> like, what can no, I get out of you? Sorry. <laughs> um, I think we're going to see... 
something happened from the fact that Maddie went out on stage and sang that song. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see a really interesting story come out of that. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see really interesting stories about the fact that Deacon is now left with responsibility for these girls and for Highway 65. Wow, yeah, Highway 65 is huge. And, and the character of Zach Wells, who I adore and I think is a wonderful actor, Cameron Scoggins. And, yeah. And um, you're certainly going to see what happens with Daphne and how Daphne, you know, at such a tender age, deals with the loss of her mother. Um, there's so many, I mean, you know, there's a whole new storyline for Juliet. Love it. That yeah. I can't talk about. There's okay. a he whole interesting road that uh, Scarlett and Gunner is, are going to go down. Okay. You know, that's really fascinating. Um, you know, and there are going to be a couple new characters that are coming along. I mean, are we know, going to deal with Clay being 24 and Maddie being 17? Yeah, sure. Marshall, come on. It's <laughs> yeah, a we'll weird. deal with it. It's a little weird. Yeah. It's a little weird. Yeah. She's well, it was turn... meant to be weird. Oh, okay. It was meant to be weird. Sure. In other words, that was the idea. In other words, she falls for someone who's inappropriate. Do you know? That never happens to teenagers. It totally happens. I get <laughs> you know? it. You're being so, relatable. I love but, it. And the thing is, we love the character of Clay. I think something really interesting is going to happen. Okay, good. Because I really do adore Around the two him. of them. Okay. And I can't... Hopefully you know, she turns 18. I, I can't give that away. But, um, you know, there are some... You, you, you know... I will say this, okay. that that Nashville over the years um, has had a lot of incidents happen. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? People falling off roofs and things like that. Do you know? Yeah. And we made a conscious choice when we took over the show this year to go deeper, to be more intimate, more authentic, as you say, to try to be more about emotion and less about incident. Okay. okay. But still... This is Nashville, and things happen, mm -hmm. and things will happen mm -hmm. in these eleven episodes. You know, um, you know, we had a plane crash. We had, you know, Raina in an accident. There are going to be things that happen. You know, it's not always going to be these deeply emotional scenes. It's this combination of intimate, powerful emotion, and the stuff of life. And sometimes the dramatic things in life that, that happen to people and, and uh, you know, that we're, that we're going to talk about and, and spin story out of. Right. Well, I think that you and everybody else have done a phenomenal job. Um, and I think the Nashies that brought Nashville back, you guys out there are part of bringing Nashville literally back to... Can, can I say something about this? Because sure. I, I feel this so deeply. Sure. Because yeah. I see it on Twitter all the time. You know... We feel so close to our viewers and mm -hmm. so grateful that they work so hard to bring this show back. Yeah. And I know a lot of people felt really bad about Raina dying and mm -hmm. felt, we saw it on Twitter. People felt betrayed. They felt like, well, why did we work so hard to bring the show back? And I, I don't know what I can do other than to say there is such a show here. There is such a heart. There's such deep emotion there's such a well of story still to be told mm -hmm. and and you know just hang on look at this episode look at next week um this is an amazing world nashville and i'm i'm so happy to be part of it okay well that's awesome so you heard it from marshall himself executive producer just hang on so i think we're going to get through this the show will go on i think it's appropriate to right now just like Obviously, say a big thank you to Connie Britton for everything she contributed to Nashville okay. over, what, okay. like a five-year yeah. um, yeah. span. And um, she did great things. But, you know, the show has got to go on. And it sounds to me like I have full confidence after spending some time with Marshall that the show will go on. So Nashville, I feel like we're good to go. Raina James, hard to lose her, but I feel like... There's so Stick much around. character building that's going to happen. And apparently next week, we're going to find out some awesome stuff. So we hope that you join us for Nash Chat next week after Nashville. Um, we will be here live just like we are on CMT's Facebook page. Check out all the hashtags if you want to be corresponding. Hashtag Nash Chat, hashtag Nashville CMT, and hashtag Nashies. <laughs>
Do you ever you you hashtag Nashi probably all the time? I, I do. Yeah. Really, you do? Yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah. Look at you, all yeah. social media savvy over no, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a busy, important guy, but he's no, checking out. Uh, you it's, you it's heard really, him? He's checking out social media. It's social media is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's like instant it. feedback. Oh my God. You so really so much. And yeah. we really are engaging with you guys, and yeah. your feedback means a lot. Majorly. So make sure you send it. So. Thank you for joining us tonight. This was definitely a very super special, awesome episode. Thank you, Thank Marshall, you. for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week.